first everyone was saying it was rape, but it wasn't. But if you're familiar with the story, there was a video going on a circle around on the internet um, of a guy that was in a hotel room filming his friend fucking this girl or in bed with a lady. And then the kind of camera pans across and then Asa Bar is seen walking into the camera shot. He kind of, you know, heckles those guys in the, in the bed, you know, te- teasing or whatever. And then he's kind of says something along the lines of, oh, you can't be effing with my assistant and not effing with me. And kind of like pulls the covers off the the off the couple that are in the bed. The girl kind of screams, Bari, leave me alone. Stop it, stop it, stop it. He continues to kind of pester. And as she jumps up to run away from him, he kind of slaps her ass or some stuff. I mean, she kind of, you can hear her kind of sobbing as she's running away uh, from the bedroom. Now, the on, on paper, that looked really grim, right? And everyone was really, really kind of like pissed off about it all and thought this was really creepy. And I think for the most part, even if he probably doesn't want to admit it, I think for the most part, um, ASAP Bari had a bit of a bad reputation anyway on the internet, right? People didn't necessarily like him as a person. You know, loads of rumors were going around that he was lacing people's blunts with PCP. Um, there was that, um, inf- you know, just a general back and forth he said with the Encona. People didn't like the fact that Vlone was printing on Gildan. Like, everyone had their fit reasons why people didn't like Bari. But for the most part, I, I was a fan of him, right? Just because as, as a crew... Um, they reminded me a lot of Odd Future and the fact that they were all kind of self-sufficient, right, or self-reliant for the most part. And they all knew how to play their position, which is what I love too, right, because it's something that's not common, especially nowadays where everyone kind of wants to be a star, everyone wants to be the MC. You don't really hear of kids having aspirations to be managers or to be agents or to have touring or booking companies. Everyone kind of wants to be in front of the camera. So to have a crew of boys involved in hip-hop, which is a typically machismo alpha i'm the one kind of um culture for the most part it kind of promotes that and you know rewards it for the most part if you can be the number one dog you're gonna get most of the fruits do you know what i mean um a la drake but i was happy to see someone a group such as asap um and even our future for um who kind of you know, d- disbanded before that who are able to be self-sufficient and have their own lanes right so some of them were modeling some of them were doing like underground rap some of them were styling in the fact in the in the way of like you know um, ASAP Nas and stuff and modeling and all that malarkey. ASAP Ilza's modeling. Um, 12E raps a little bit and does his brand. Um, last year being broke. Then you've got Ferg. He's got his own sort of lane. Rocky's got his complete sort of different lane. And then Barry had this kind of like cult um, hood brand that was sort of like, it reminded me of like the hood version of True Religion, right? The street version of True Religion. Like he really knows how to kind of like ace that market. You know, people that like to wear like fucked up jeans, low when they're bum showing and uh, little about Dean, little about Dean jacket, you know, like uh, as Playboy Carty said, right? Like that kind of style. He really knew how to kind of ace it. And I really like the logo too. The V reminded me a lot of the kind of baby ape symbol. You know what I mean? It's very, very iconic logo. You can see from afar. Um, the fact that it's a sort of stencil image. I love it. I just love the whole aesthetic behind it. I'm not a fan of the prices. I think it's a bit high, the prices, but you know, for the most part, he does make quite small quantities. A lot of it's all made in the US. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of go into the way he does it. And I like how he drops the stuff. Like some, some most of his limited edition. It's when he sold in a particular window. He does very cool collaborations. Everything kind of works out well. But unfortunately, this also came at a wrong time when he just, I think he just did the Paris runway show, right? That was kind of well received. Um, the one that little peep kind of walked in, RIP. So it kind of came at a wrong time. And, and again, like I said, I think he had so much of a weird reputation on the internet that people were quick to jump on this. And especially, you know, during the whole Me Too movement and kind of try and cancel them and get them the fuck out of here. The story kind of broke. And his initial statement wasn't the best, right? I remember the statement he brought out kind of was like, you know, a little bit dismissive of the furora, of the furora, of the online, whatever that word was, right? Of the online backlash. He was quite dismissive of the online backlash. Like, ah, oh, you know I me, mean? we're friends. We sorted it out amicably behind the scenes. I'll reflect on my actions. But then, you know, reportedly Nike dropped him. But they, I, didn't, I don't think really they make an official statement. Nike did unofficially drop him, which was, you know, hypocritical to say the least when, you know, if you're in these Nike executives, 10 of them, right? Or 10 or 5 of them left Nike. High-ranking officials in Nike um, were left uh, because they were making the working work environment toxic, which basically means that they were creeping on young girls in the office, which is insane, right? A corporation just as big as Nike had problems with their executives uh, touching up girls in the office. It's like, uh, okay. So, you know, it's a bit hypocritical, you know, double standards and all that. 
So they kind of unofficially dropped him. But the word around town, now don't take it from me, rumor mill, is that they kind of had to unofficially drop him to kind of save face in public, but they're working with him behind the scenes. So, you know, it's going to be one of those kind of like Louis C.K. things where he will kind of pop up again, hopefully no one remembers. So I think it was one of those kind of attitudes. That's what I've heard, right? They didn't actually drop him. It's sort of like when um, Reebok kind of dropped Rick Ross when he kind of made that um, slipper girl and Mickey thing in her line or whatever. Some, you know what I think when he mentioned that thing about sipping a girl MDMA so she doesn't remember anything. So yeah, um, the case from Bari got dismissed. Um, the story came out the other day. It kind of got a lot of traction, which was nice to see because, again, I'm not sure how real the story is. I don't know what actually happened or what didn't happen. But I am a fan of cases... Um, I, I'm, I'm a fan of cases being brought to the judge, right? Sexual assault cases not being tried in a court of public opinion. Actually take it to the judge, go all the way, and then whoever the part, whoever in the party wants to pers- proceed with the charges, then cool, you'll proceed. If you can sort out, I'm a complete, then that's fine too. Um, and I'm not even sure if she's the one I even pressed charges, actually. I don't know what actually happened. I don't know if the, the video got out and then someone snitched and sent it to... But can that happen? Can a video... Can you be involved in an assault like that the video leak, someone reported to the police and then you get investigated or does the person that was assaulted have to report you? I don't know how that really works out, but essentially this case was dropped because the lady in question didn't want to continue pressing charges, which is interesting because in that whole era, that in that whole time that thing was popping off about this whole sexual assault thing, I do remember being a little bit confused why we didn't hear who the girl's name was. We didn't see a picture of her. I didn't see a picture of her on social media for the most part. I didn't see her come out and say anything. Like It was quite quiet after it. It was just like mostly Bari talking about things indirectly on Instagram or bringing out statements. But it, there wasn't, I didn't really hear anything from her, which made me think that they were actually friends, right? Um, or they did know each other, especially because like, you know, she was in bed with his assistant. So I'm assuming they did know each other, but it never, it ne- but it never got any further. So I'm assuming the girl probably, I don't know, maybe got cold feet, maybe saw the severity of the accusations that she was pinning against Bari, maybe thought it wasn't that big of a deal. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I'm a little, a little bit, you know, I haven't really made my mind up on the whole thing, but the case itself is quite interesting. I'll read you an article that I'm seeing here on Hip Hop Wired. Um, ASAP Bari, sexual assault case in LA tossed. So many questions, no, few answers. Written by Robert Longfellow. Uh, ASAP Bari won't be facing sexual assault charges in LA. The Los Angeles District Attorney announced that he won't be pursuing a case against the designer born Jabari Shelton. Accused, uh, according to the Hollywood Reporter, the DA's office declined to charge Bari because the accuser did not want to continue with the case. Back in November 2017, so it was last year, Bari was sued for sexual assault by the woman. Okay, so he was sued <clears throat> by the woman seen in the footage that surfaced um, of him forcing to remove the sheet from her while she was naked in bed in a London hotel room. It's unclear whether or not Bari is still facing charges in London. Ah, so that... Hold on. Yeah, because that's what happened, in it, right? Yeah, I remember that. Um... So in London, in May 2018, the ASAP mob member was arrested in sexual assault in London while in a layer of Heathrow Airport. So I remember that. So the case, but it happened, the thing happened in London. I'm pretty sure it happened during a Drake tour or something. Some, some, someone was touring here and it happened in a hotel. I'm pretty sure it happened in London. So this thing happened because the girl had a British accent. Like, Barry, stop. I remember just hearing that and thinking, shit, that's fucking grim. You know, when you hear some, it's just a bit weird, isn't it? But um, yeah, I do, I do remember him being arrested when you had a layover here. And then, um, which is strange. I don't know. Yeah, strange, isn't it? Why, why would he, why would he be charged in LA if if the person that he was assaulting was was from the UK? It doesn't really make much sense, does it? I don't understand that one. Um, but then I guess if you were, if you if you like say if you if you have a speaking, if someone went to London and raped someone and came out to LA, they'll still be arrested. I'm assuming, right? Like you can't just run away from shit. I'm assuming, right? I would assume, and get deported back or something along those kind of lines, but. Yeah, so I'm assuming the girl didn't want to continue with the case. You, you know, like, I don't know. I think if you do something fucked up like that and the person's able to forgive you, then I think that's it, innit? You just have to move on. I think the public has to move on and just, like, get over it. Um, it's annoying, don't get me wrong, for some people, because, you know, especially if you've had to suffer it yourself or you feel as if the girl might have been pressured but we don't know anything we're not we're not privy to the conversation they have we don't know what friendship they had before we don't know if the girl kind of got cold feet because she realized the severity of the situation and that she could essentially you know take away this other guy's livelihood because of one mistake is it a mistake is it something that he's always done i don't know i'm a little bit on the fence with the whole thing um uh again like we don't really know what happened we don't know the circumstances behind it 
and I guess the story still has to unfold because it's still the London part of the issue. But I, I, I would, I would stress for some people that are overly invested in these kind of things to maybe take a step back and you know work on yourself as opposed to like you know going around and trying to become the social police. Do you know what I mean? For everything else that's going on around the world. I think that sometimes people can sometimes waste a lot of energy on these kind of stories that have nothing to do with them. I know at the time it was very a peculiar situation to be involved in or to kind of like be part of the scene and hear the stuff going on and hearing no one speak about it, right? Same sort of thing with the Aaron Bondaroff stuff. Like he was very important for the figure of, of streetwear scene, someone that I kind of miss as well in the scene, but you don't hear anyone speak about him. I'm not sure if he's still got even friends that are kind of looking out for him and being there for him. I hope they are because that must be a lonely time. But there's weird things happen like that in the scene where no one kind of like speaks openly about these kind of things or offers their hand and support. Everyone's kind of private with their shit. But, you know, they're quick to kind of call out other things, which is kind of be annoying. But again, I understand, you know, it's you kind of have to kind of mind your own business in this kind of regard. And I think for the consumer, for the most part, if you have got a big problem with what he done, then I guess you have to vote with your with your wallet and not support the brand. Do you know what I mean? Like if you have a, that much of a, if you have that strong of opinion behind the whole thing, don't buy his clothes. Do you know what I mean? That, that's, that can kind of be your little silent protest in that regard. But I don't think, I don't, yeah, again, it's like, yeah, I don't think people should like concern themselves too much with the actions of others. I think you should... Um, use it as maybe a barometer to kind of gauge where your moral compass lays, right? If you kind of are a bit put off by it and if you kind of don't like that kind of thing, maybe try it to analyze your own social group and see if you have anyone in your group that could kind of be susceptible to that sort of thing and kind of cut them out of your life. Maybe it's a fact of like making sure you don't get yourself in that kind of situation yourself. But there's lessons to be gleaned from it, but I don't think there's judgment to be put on it because, again, we're not privy to these conversations. We don't know what happened in that room. We don't know what happened to them privately as well. And yeah, I guess we still have something. We still have another part of the story when it comes to the London case. Maybe something else might happen. Maybe it might not. We have to wait and see.